Hi, my little angels. Get in here. Come on in. I'm actually really excited about today's video. Um, I've been asked for this. I mentioned recently in a um, video about making Easter dinner that I chemified my recipes. And somebody said, oh, please do a cooking video. I want to know how to chemify. So I'm going to show you. <laughs> well, I'm going to talk you through what I do. Um, but I see a, I can't believe how many people came today and it's so rainy and dreary out and I see new people. Hi, new people. Come on in. There's lots of seats. Sit at the table. There's always seats at my table for you. Always. Come on in. I'm glad you're here and that you're giving my channel a chance. Please feel free to like it, to share it. Comments are amazing, guys. I love the comments. I really do. I love knowing what you think. I love knowing what you feel. I love hearing from you and interacting with you. And because we interact with each other, we take this great big world and make it smaller. And that's a good thing. So please hit that subscribe button below too, if you don't mind. And I see my returning people you guys have your seats. Be comfortable. You know where you go. I'm so glad you guys are here and that you've always stuck with me. Thank you for that. And please keep those comments coming. I just love them. Okay, so before we begin this video, I want to show you something. It's actually one of my favorite things. Um, and for the new people, I don't shove my religion down anyone's throat, but I do have a very strong faith and belief system. And I do say a prayer for everyone that watches my videos every night. I say it, even if you don't subscribe. <laughs> but this I got from a company called Dayspring. It's a breadboard, but I love it. It's a Bible quote and it says, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts. And that's Acts chapter two, verse 46. But I just love it and I don't use it. It sits back there um, as a display piece because it's super heavy. So, but it does make great sounds too. Okay, so. I want to show you a few of my favorite cookbooks first and then I'm going to talk to you guys about how I chemify my recipes okay it took me a long time to learn to cook guys I'm not gonna kid um, this is my husband's blood pressure cuff uh, I was gonna use it to put my camera on but I decided not to be lazy and went upstairs and got a stand um, my family has always collected recipes from magazines, from um, the TB Guide used to have them, uh, Reader's Digest, things like that. So I taught my mom, I had some tricks up my sleeve. This is an old fashioned photo album, guys. We used to take pictures. And so what she did is, oops, some are coming out. We take the recipes and pop them in here so they were safe. And I actually found this um, after my mom passed. And what I love the most is she started putting in her own. So now I have these great cards in her handwriting, which I love. I absolutely love, 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 love. And some of them, Oh, there's a pot roast recipe. I want to check that out. Um, I'm trying to find one in particular. Whose recipe is that? I don't know who that is. Um, I had it all chosen for you. Like there's from the back of a craft peanut butter jar. Okay. Anyways, there was one in here and it said um, Robin's favorite, Robin's famous Christmas cookies. And that's my cousin, Robin. So that's one. This is a book that, okay, so this is the year 2000. When my husband moved out, his mother sat down and hand wrote all his favorite recipes. Okay. 
here's another one for pot roast. Sauce for Brad's ribs. Brad's favorite short ribs. Chicken pot pie. I've never seen him eat a chicken pot pie in his life. Um, oven beef burgundy. Like, these are things, the problem with these is they're not protected. So I can see some of the handwriting fading already. And see, we started doing that ourselves. When Baby Angel was young, I had this book, My Betty Crocker. And I have all my recipes written out. But again, starting to fade. So we transferred a bunch. But see, I even take some off the internet. You can still do it. These are my garlic mushrooms, which I do chemify, by the way. But I'll talk about that in a minute. Peas and bacon was my daughter's favorite dish that my mother-in-law made. And this is her handwriting, my daughter's when she was about eight. So I'm laminating that. I want that for keeps, you know? So we did go out and get two of these. Now this one we've already started. And these ones are a little more, these are protected. Okay, they're in plastic sleeves. So they can be a little more protected and last longer. And then this one, I don't think we've even started. And I think this is a Kate Spade one. Yes, it is. So this one hasn't even gotten started yet. But the thing I find with these, they're very small. I like a big one, okay? I'm trying to get everything organized for you guys because I have some things to show you that I think you're going to really like. So I ordered this one. What I like is the spiral binding. It's large and I like the cover. It's not gonna hold a lot, but I think these are gonna be my all time favorite. I'm gonna sit down and, you know, Auntie Angel's favorite recipes. And I think these are gonna be mostly the ones I've kind of made up or chemified as we call it. Now, can I show you my first cookbook that I ever had? of my very own. And the aunt and uncle that were here this past weekend, they gave me this. This is the Nancy Drew cookbook. I love this book. Um, there was a pork chop and rice recipe in here. These are griddle cakes, um, Hannah's cheese puffs. Like they're all from the books, right? Hidden staircase biscuits. Okay, you cannot start with refrigerated biscuits. I'm start. I'm just sorry. Um, oh, coated steak rolls. They sound good. So yeah, this was what I started cooking with. And I didn't know how to cook properly. The thing that frightened me the most, and I think this is a lot of people that are starting out, how long to cook it and at what temperature. And I remember my mom had this um, Down East um, cookbook. She's from the Maritimes. And I was following it. It was a seven layer dinner, um, which she would call boiled dinner. So I was making, and then I turned the page after I assembled all of the ingredients in the pot. And it said, put in hot oven till done. What in the hell is that supposed to mean? So I finally figured it out. For those of you that are just starting, 350 is what you always want to start with. To me, a hot oven is 400 and above, okay? 350 will generally get everything, get the job done. If you're cooking something delicate, it might be 300, but recipes will usually tell you that. I don't usually mess with those unless it's, um, because I gluten-free bake now, and it's taken me almost two years to figure out how to do that. And I have some great tips for that. Um, I do tend to cook it a little lower than it calls for and a little longer. I just find it absorbs a little better and you lose that grittiness, okay? But if you're starting out and you need a cookbook or if you need to give a shower gift maybe um, for someone who's just setting up their own place, or you know someone moving out and getting their own place, I think this is a great gift, I really do. 
And when I show you how badly damaged this book is, you'll understand how much I use it. Okay, here we go. This is Mark Bittman. Is it Bittman? Yeah. How to Cook Everything. Simple recipes for great food. Like, it is seen better days, guys. Like, look at this. Okay. But I love it. He takes you through everything step by step. At the beginning of each section, he dis he. if you want to read it, he describes what you're going to be doing. Oh, by the way, do you like my apron? Check this out. There we go. See? Isn't it cute? You know how many times I've cooked wearing an apron? None. I bought this just for this video because I thought I would be cooking it. Um, I might still do a cookbook, a cooking video, but for now I'm just... My kitchen's not clean up. I'm waiting till I get the new kitchen to do that. Um, because at this point, I don't care what happens in there. It's all being destroyed. Um, but yeah, this book has seen so many. But it tells you all variations. There's a couple things in here I don't agree with. And I've made my little notes in the center. Why is this page marked? Split pea soup. Baby Angel's favorite. Um, I hate it. But she loves it. Um, polenta, I'm the only one that likes. But stuffed... Oh, Asobuco. That's what this is. I love Asobuco. And that's the other thing, guys. Find a recipe. Asobuco is a perfect recipe. It cooks forever in a very low oven or on top of the stove. It looks so impressive. But once you start the cooking process, you're done. Done. Um, it's very easy to cook once you assemble it. And it has a few ingredients, but not many. It's basically a stew. Stews and, and stuff are all the same. Uh, another great thing to do, this is a great stew if you can have Guinness. Um, I have to find a gluten-free equivalent right now, but I haven't found it. What I do is I take a steak or a small roast. I take a big steak or a small roast. I cut it up into chunks. Put it in a bag of flour, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion, whatever seasonings you want and shake the hell out of it. I almost said something else, but did. And then you have a pan, a hot pan with oil in it. You always heat your pan, then add your oil, and then add your meat when it's hot. Do it that way and you'll get great searing. There's one exception to that rule, and I'll tell you that in a second. And you just brown it on all sides, take the meat out, okay? And then I usually will add onions, and if you're going to do potatoes, don't add them yet, okay? Um, onions and a hard root vegetable like a carrot could go in there in big chunks. And kind of do that. And then pour the Guinness on top. Put the meat back with any juice that's come off the plate. And stir that all up. Add some beef broth. Turn it down to low. A simmer is low, like a two, okay? On an electric range. Um, a low flame would be a low flame, okay? On a gas, I've never cooked with gas, I have to be honest. I'm afraid of it. And um, because I've never cooked on it. And that, you just leave it for like two hours. And then if it's not thick enough, you make a slurry, very fancy term. A tablespoon of cornstarch and cold liquid equivalent. You can use leftover broth, you can use water. Just mix it till it's, it's smooth pour it in and stir it in and it will thicken okay but you have to use cold okay so that's my recipe and it's so impressive and you pour it over rice you pour it over potatoes i don't like putting potatoes in my stew i like doing them separate i'll boil them and then add them at the end into the stew um, i just don't like a mushy potato in a stew it's just a me preference but it's a very impressive dish. You serve it with some crusty bread you got at the grocery store. Bob's your uncle, okay? Even if you don't have an uncle named Bob. Okay. Now, I do have some other cookbooks I'm gonna show you. Yes, I have Ina. I love Ina, okay? I know, I know. If you don't have butter made from the tears of virgins from the Himalayan mountains, then plain will do, but. I know what they say, but she really is. She taught me to make the best roast chicken. Um, well, chicken always scared me, always. I was afraid it was gonna poison everybody. But the other best friend you'll have in the kitchen, guys, is a thermometer. 
And I like the wired ones that you put into your meat and the actual reading part sticks outside on your counter so you can just walk by and see it. That'll save you, you know? That's gonna, and download one of those uh, little templates that tell you chicken is cooked at this temperature. I think it's 185, 165 something. Beef is 125 for rare, 135 for medium, 145 for well done and above, you know, like that kind of thing. And then you have it. It's not a worry. Another one I love, she's one of my favorite. Um, she won the Canadian MasterChef. This is Mary Burke. She also has her own TV show now. And I'm actually going to go and see her and be in the studio audience soon with my good friend, Kathy. She has great, great recipes. I and they've never failed me. And she has a recipe, if you have time, for caramelized onions that are the best caramelized onions I've ever had. They're done in the oven. You don't have to sit there and baby them. They're fabulous. If anyone wants the recipe, let me know and I'll post it for you, okay? Another book I've just started and I cannot wait to um, do, make the recipe back here. This is from Farm to Market, and this is by Lindy. If you didn't know, Lindy is Sunshine on My Shoulders ASMR. Yes, she is. See, there she is. And her recipe in here is for rum cake. Now, I'm reading this, and I'm just like, yes, thank you. I will be making this. Loving it. And she writes it very simply, very easily. I love recipes like that. And this is pretty much... It is, this is all ingredients. Oh, I don't have the box cake mix right now because I have to buy the gluten-free ones. But other than that, I'm definitely making that very soon. Very soon, probably this weekend. So these are my favorites right now. Now, how to Kimify. Okay, I follow, when I get a recipe for the very first time, um, perhaps Rachel loves, Rachel Cooks with Love on YouTube. I'm trying out my chili rellenos. I make it exactly how she says to make it. Always the first time I follow the recipe. Then I chemify it the next time I make it. I add a little of this, little of that. Um, Alton Brown's cocoa brownies are a perfect example. Made them, everyone loved them, but I'm like, I think they need a little coffee in the mix um, because I think coffee and chocolate go so well together. It needed some chocolate chips and I cut up some maraschino cherries to put in as well. Um, if I'm feeling very fancy and it's a fancy, if it's a gift for someone, I'll actually spend the bucks and go out and buy amarino cherries and put them in. Now, what you have to know about that. For that recipe, because you want a moist brownie, not a problem, but I do cook it maybe five minutes longer because if I'm adding the cherries, I'm adding extra moisture. So you kind of have to know what you can add to your cooking. So what I do, if I'm adding a dry thing, like chocolate chips, like nuts, um, I don't have to alter my recipe with liquids and whatnot, unless the, the batter looks, looks wet and that's only gonna come with experience, or dry I mean. Um, if you're adding something wet, like cherries or start fruit, usually it's a fruit. If you're adding a fruit to it, or you decide, you know what, these brownies need a splash of bourbon. Oh, that would be good. And you're doing that, just add another tablespoon of flour. Okay, just so that your ratio is correct. Because that's, baking is not as forgiving as cooking. Cooking is so forgiving, you guys. Cooking is what, you get to do and express yourself. Like that Guinness recipe, that's not the recipe I immediate, I found on the internet. Um, it was for a stew and I just altered it. Oh, and Worcestershire, I forgot to say that. Anytime I make anything with beef, I add some Worcestershire sure, 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 sauce. Um, and for us here, the Lee and Perrins and the No Name are gluten-free. You have to check stuff like that. We have to buy gluten-free soya sauce too. So um, you have to watch for things like that if you're cooking gluten-free. Now with cooking, play with it. 
add it. You'll learn what flavors go with what. Um, Deglazing a pan just means you've got stuff stuck on the bottom. Pour some liquid in and as it boils, it'll loosen. You just take a, a scraper or a spatula and scrape it up. And you can deglaze with water, with juice, with booze, um, you know, broth, did I say broth? Broth. You can deglaze with anything. And what that is, is it takes all that stuff on the bottom, which is flavor, and it brings it into the broth. And when you put the meat in, that absorbs, okay? Spaghetti sauce, guys, I'm going to teach you to make the best spaghetti sauce. And it's pretty easy. We're not going to do it from scratch. So buy a jar of passata, which is also called strained tomatoes. I've also used crushed tomatoes. Either one will work, okay? And you don't have to buy the most expensive because I, I do love Muti, M-U-T-T-I. That brand is phenomenal. Um, but you can use whatever brand is available. You, if you want a little chunky, buy a can of diced tomatoes. And I always do, so I'm telling you that now. Pour them in juice and all. All right, but before you do that, don't do that yet, sorry. I want you to cut up an onion. I want you to cut up a pepper. And I want you to grate a small carrot, okay? I want you to put olive oil in your pan, in your pot, and you're gonna saute, saute. It just means cook it till it's done, till it looks see-through, that's all. You can add mushrooms at this point too, if you want. Put those in. Now you're gonna add in, no, then you're gonna add in wine, white wine. Everybody will tell you red. People, my Italian friends right now are like, <gasps> she's pazzo, I'm not, I know. My family doesn't like red wine and it triggers migraines. And my daughter already suffers from migraines. So we use white and half a cup, three quarters of a cup. Never use a wine you won't drink. Biggest mistake you can make, do not buy cooking wine. There are cheap wines out there that you could drink Chilean wines, delicious, and they're less expensive. Anyways, then you add in all your tomato stuff and then your seasoning, salt, pepper. If you're using fresh garlic, you can do that. I tend to not, I if a sauce is gonna simmer all day, I prefer using powdered. Personally, I find that uh, fresh garlic can go acrid if it's just sitting for an hour, like just, that's my preference some dried basil, some dried oregano, um, a little bit of chili flakes if you like a kick. And then I add a bit of water to that. You can also add a broth. If you have tomato juice, great. I usually, whatever the jars come in, I put some water in them, shake the hell out of them, pour it in. That way you're, you're not wasting anything. When it comes to a bubble, turn it way down, like to the lowest setting. Put your lid half on, half off, and let it simmer. Just let it simmer, come every half hour, so give it a stir. Make sure it's not sticking on the bottom. You let that simmer for two hours, guys, you have the best tomato sauce, the best. Now, this is optional, because I am gonna start a war saying this. I add a teaspoon of sugar to my sauce. I do it to my cornbread too, so you can all come for me now, okay? Um, you do what you want. Do what you want, okay? Now, for the meatballs, this is how you make great meatballs. My friend Antonella's mom taught me this. Well, Antonella taught me, but it's from her mom's recipe. So, first thing you're going to do is take a piece of bread, break it up with your fingers into a bowl, small. Then you're going to pour some milk over it, just to cover. Wait till it absorbs. Add some breadcrumbs. We use panko, a handful. This is by eye, okay? It depends how much meat you have, you'll know. Just a handful. Pars I use dried parsley, you can use fresh parsley. Salt, pepper, I add Parmesan cheese, about a half a cup, okay? Quarter cup to a half a cup, depending how much you like. If it's looking really dry, add a little more milk. Break your egg, beat it, pour it in, okay? I don't know why recipes don't tell you to beat your eggs first. Always beat your egg first. It just makes the mixing easier. Now you're gonna mix all of that together, okay? It's called something. I wanna say it's called a petard, but I could be completely off on that word. But that's the fancy cooking term. And 
then you add your meat to it. Now, if I'm feeling fancy, I do ground beef and ground pork. You can do ground beef, you can do ground pork. Um, we've actually discovered we like meatloaf better if it's just ground pork. Um, you can also add some ground chicken, ground veal, whatever. Sausage, ground sausage is incredible in with it. Okay, now you're gonna use your fork. I use my hands, but I wear gloves because now I have these. You're gonna mix them up. You're gonna form your meatballs. Make sure your hands are damp. Now, you can do one of two things, okay? Actually, you can do one of three things. Four, you can fry them. I don't do that. If you fry them, okay, but you're gonna have to watch someone else on YouTube because I, I don't do that, okay? I bake them in the oven. I bake them at 350 for about 15 minutes. And then I plop them in the sauce. Okay, and let them finish cooking and absorbing all that sauce flavor. You can also put them raw into the sauce. I've done this many, many times. They're very tender. It's perfectly safe, okay? Um, I think they're cooked perfectly in about half an hour to 40 minutes, but I put them in for the, the hour and a half, two hours that I'm cooking the sauce. The trick is when you put them in, do not touch them for 10 minutes, okay? If you, do, if you start stirring them ahead of time, you're going to have a meat sauce. Nothing wrong with it, but you want meatballs, okay? The other thing I do is bake them in the oven till they're browned. Seven, maybe ten minutes, and then put them in and let them finish cooking in the sauce. To me, that's the best of both worlds, okay? And so cook them in the oven. It's 350. I line a cookie sheet with tin foil. Easier clean up. If they stick on the bottom, they stick on the bottom. Just put them in, okay? It's not a big deal. And when you're finished, there's your sauce and meatballs. And I promise you guys, they will be delicious, okay? And you will Kimify or Susanify or Matthewify or um, Abishulaify, whatever you want, whoever's watching, okay? Abiify, whoever, okay? Yourself because maybe you like more basil than I do. Maybe you like fresh herbs. I'm not a fresh herb person, I find them too floral. Um, maybe you like it arrabbiata, really hot, excuse my, ex my accent and pronunciation. Put those in, okay? Um, whatever you want. Um, oh, I also forgot. For those of you that wrote down the Guinness recipe, add a little bit of black coffee too. That helps with the richness, okay? And if you're making it into a stew and adding in all your veggies, um, that's fine too. The coffee will help with that too. If you're making a chili, you can combine tomato sauce with um, your ground meat, all your spices, your chili pepper, your um, wajillo chili pepper, I have ancho chili pepper, cumin, I'm not a huge fan of cumin, I'll be honest, but cumin is what makes that Mexican taste to me. Put what you like in it. If you don't like beans in your chili, and it's a big thing, I learned this trick from my daughter's daycare chef. What, 15 years ago? I said to her, so you make your chili without beans? She goes, no, no, I use kidney beans. I said, how do you get the kids to eat the kidney beans? I can't even get my husband to eat kidney beans. She says, I puree them. It makes the, the chili thick too. They get all the fiber, all the taste. And so I've been pureeing my beans for my chili ever since. I also add a tablespoon of cocoa powder. Trust me on this. It's delicious in with your chili and your spices. And again, chili should simmer for a couple of hours, guys, at least. Okay, I think that's part one of our cooking done. Let me know what you guys think. Um, if you'd like to hear more, if this was a bust. But I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, don't be afraid of cooking, okay? Um, you're gonna have flops. I still have flops, okay? Um, it happens. That's how you learn. Because remember, it's only a mistake if you don't learn from it. If you learn from it, it's a lesson. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video because I really, really enjoyed doing it with you. And yeah, so I love you. I value you. I honor you.
and I'm so very, very glad that you were born.